My friend Mike Stafford challenged me one day. He said, you need to come up with something like a, a jack-o'-lantern or something. So I did one of these. It's hollow on the inside. I made it like a little box and put the top on like a cap for it. So it's actually hollowed on the inside. And I haven't painted a face, but I thought it, I thought it looked pretty much like a real pumpkin there. So I may do that one year when I'm down to about 10 kids or something. <laughs> and then uh, another idea I tried uh, about three years ago was an ice cream cone. And I did some multi access, just moved it a little bit so it looked like the scones weren't quite stacked right. And you see a little bit of texturing. But I just thought it just looked a little too weird that it didn't have anything melting or, you know, where it was kind of squished down. So I don't know if I'll ever do much with that. But that's just some different ideas that, you know, you try different things and see what happens. Draw them out on a piece of paper, whatever. Um, in the world of cold climates, penguins and seals and uh, polar bears and all that kind of stuff are really having a hard time because of global warming. But my favorite bird is a penguin, especially the emperor penguins. This is actually a king penguin, but uh, has a chick that's almost colored the same way as the emperor penguin. But if you look at it, if you see an upright bird that's black and white and it's tall over a foot, nine times out of ten you recognize it as a penguin. So it doesn't take much to go with a folk art or a stylized caricature of a penguin. So I decided I would make a bunch of big penguins one year. And I went a little over ambitious, and it was because I was recovering from knee replacement surgery, and I was on a lot of pain meds or whatever. But I decided I'd carve the wings and everything on there, which for 72 penguins took a long time. <laughs> and uh, my kids and my wife were laughing at me and said, "You just should quit that. You're not, you know, they don't know the difference." But I carved every one of them with wings and and painted them and so forth. But then the next year. Everybody's saying, what? what about the baby penguins? So I came up with an adult and a baby penguin. So once I do like this, you pretty much know that's going to be a penguin, right? I mean, that's just a black and white upright body. It doesn't even have a face on or anything. I'll pass a, a baby around. So I had a bunch of poplar at one time that was one and a half by one and a half and about, I don't know, some of them were 10, 12 inches long, some were only four or five inches. It doesn't take a long piece. And... For speed, I don't really worry about centering this thing because it's just going to be an upright bird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the jaws with the corners going into the open spots. With these number one jaws, especially with a stronghold, you can get it really good and tight. I will bring the tail stock up at first just to give me a little safety in case things aren't quite right. So I'm going to rough this out. Obviously, this can be any diameter I want it to be, but I'm going to try to make roughly a long bead and a small bead on the top. You did notice, you did notice I said try. The one thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to have the bottom of it square, so if it needs to stand up on a shelf or something, it can. Since I'm going to be hollowing, I'm going to be taking out a lot of that center part, so I don't have to go all the way square to the to the drive, the life center there. So I'm going to make a long, sort of an oval bead here at the end. My friend Mike Stafford, being a box turner, really, really got into Richard Raffin. How many of you guys ever been to a Richard Raffin demo? The guy can turn a box. Lid, finny on everything in like 15 minutes. And I mean, he doesn't need to sand it. He's just, he's, he's in his 70s now and he's been turning probably 50 some odd years. He's just excellent. Anyhow, if you ever go to one of his demos, he always makes a bit of a mistake. And uh, so it takes his demo Usually about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. 
And uh, so Mike is on this Norwegian wood turners cruise. And Richard's on the lathe over here selling whatever company products, wood fast or something from his area. And Mike is helping Mike Hunter sell his hunter tools, the hollowing tools and things, those carbon bit tools. And uh, he notices every time he's in a demo or sees Richard turning that he always has something happen. Piece pops off the lathe, he gets a catch, he breaks something. Something happens every time he does a demo. And these guys have been turning 55, 50 some odd years. So he asked him one day when he was taking a break, he said, uh, Richard, he said, do you get nervous in front of people and you get a catch like that or do you get careless or do people distract you or what? And he said, no, Mike. He said, you know, I, I can turn a box and finish it and everything in about 15 minutes. He said, but they're paying me to do an hour and a half demo. So I've got to do at least 45 minutes or people will get upset. And usually that's what it takes, about 30, 45 minutes when he does his demo. And then he answers questions and so forth. So my point is, if I do have something go wrong, it was on purpose, right, Chuck? Got my long, my long angle there, my long bead. Want to go a little bit here and make kind of a neck. And I need the the head to be a little bit smaller than the than the body. I think the last time I turned one of these is at North Carolina Symposium two or three years ago. So this was like the, I don't know, the fourth or fifth ornament I did for for kids. I had a really good smooth head, now I'm trying to make it smaller. It's not too bad. Now what I would do with this is send it 240, 220, whatever paper you got. Paint three coats of gesso on it. Then the second one is putting the head on there and giving me some support at the top so I can drill it. The third is drilling it out and I'm going to make a step as well for a plug. Black gesso? No, I'm using white gesso. No, I'm using white gesso. Oh, I use that to give me a nice smooth surface. Yeah, it's it's going to give me a smoother surface than wood will if I sand it to 220 or so. The the wood is going to absorb an awful lot of paint if I don't put something on there to kind of block it. And it'll take me two or three coats. Now this is one that I did the the body and I carved the wings. You'll see them. And then I did the line of the, the shape of where I'm gonna paint it. And it doesn't have to be, this one is rounded head and this one's got like kind of a heart or a cleft in the hairline or top line. Um, so I'm using white gesso for the white. It gives me a kind of a flat white. And then I'll use uh, black acrylic paint for the uh, outside part of the body. Alright, so now I got that. I want to hollow some. I think it's mainly because I really like to hollow with a with a, uh, a round skew. Because it's so fascinating that it works so quick. Now for this I would typically use a 9 16 inch drill bit. And I have a Morse taper that I'll just stick in there because it saves time. probably long enough. Okay, so now I'm going to line up my tool wrist and I'm going to hollow this thing to the 64th of an inch. You guys know better than that. <laughs> this is going a little bit slow for really hollowing. 
I'm going to get some vibration, so I'm not going to hollow the whole thing anyway. Because this is going to give me a bunch of noise. But here again, I want to be the toe of the toe of the skew going right along the inside edge there. And trying not to hit the chuck with my finger. And all I'm trying to do is lighten it. You can see I'm getting shaven, so I'm riding the bevel. Um, but then once I get in far enough, I'll make a little step. I usually go in probably three sixteenths of an inch to make a little recess. All right. So I've gone and hollowed it. I've sanded it. Made my little step. So now I need to finish finish the bird, the body of it. This is where when I have a catch, the penguin looks like it's going to ride on the short bus. Some penguins aren't all that bright. So, I've got a step here. And now what I need to do is cut a plug for it. And I've got enough wood here to do that. I want the plug to have a little bit of a camphor or angle on the bottom. At the same time, whenever I get a chance, I try to make it so people can see that the, the piece was wood turned. Even if it's painted, I want to say, so I'll take a little point tool and make some rings. And I'll try to make one that's wide enough I can put my name around it when I, you know, when I paint it. All right. We're gonna, gonna kind of guess at a plug here. Since I don't have the, the actual penguin there. Unless somebody wants to hand it to me real quick. So I want to make this fairly thin, but I don't want to cut into my groove. Uh, make it smaller. There we go. I want to set on that little ledge. glue that in with some super glue and so now I got it hollowed out so it's not a heavy it's still got probably I don't know 30 grams of wood still in there needs to come out so but that's the penguin except for the beak so I go back to my piece of yellow heart and what I'm gonna try to turn is a, a short beak that has a quick taper so it goes down at a, at a quick angle because penguins don't have long long beaks typically at least in none of the cartoons I used to watch. I have penguins. He's asking how did I cut the wings. What I did is I would draw with a pencil on the gesso the shape of what I wanted the wings to be like. And then I used a Dremel. And I, I used a, what they call a stump cutter. The stump cutter is shaped like a pear. But I took the stump cutter and I went to my grinder and ground the end of it flat. So I could run straight up against the edge of the wings. I'm sorry I didn't bring one to show you what it looks like, but it makes it so you can go flat at whatever edge you're going to and round out or, or dip in uh, next to it. And after I used the stump cutter, I'd use some 120 sandpaper and try to smooth it as much as I could. I didn't try to make it perfectly smooth. And uh, then I just put gesso on it and painted it black like the rest of the body was, except for the white section. Alrighty, so I need a tenon. And I can make the tenon whatever size I want because I haven't drilled a hole in that. So I'll make my tenons, and some days I make tenons a quarter inch, sometimes an eighth of an inch, sometimes three eighths of an inch. Depends on what mood I'm in or what I'm, you know, doing, and they all seem to be about the same. So then I go to my penguin bodies and I drill them all the same hole. So I need a little tenon. We'll do something about 
somewhere around, I don't know, 5 64. That sound good? And we'll make it about 10 inches long. So it has plenty of room to go into the penguin. All right. So now I've got my tenon to glue it on. I've made a little bit of an undercut because I'm gluing on a, a round surface. You know that if you make an undercut and you're matching something up on a round surface, even a box lid, if you make a slight undercut, it'll always sit flat against the round surface. It won't end up with a gap around two sides of it. So I always do that. Now I want to make the face diameter of the part right up against the body. I want to make that somewhere around a quarter inch or so. I want to give myself some working room. I love a round skew. Whenever I can use it, I use it on ornaments and things. It's so versatile, except when you have a little catch. This could be a spiral penguin nose or beak. So see how I'm making it sort of a, instead of going straight like a point, I'm putting a little bit of a, a uh, radius on it. Okay. Oh, that little, that little dark line on there would hide any spiral that I had left, but I don't have one. So there's the, there's the beak. And now what I do is I just go to a drill press, drill a hole that same size in the body, and then uh, glue the beak on after, actually, I said that wrong. I usually finish painting it and putting the eyes on and everything, and then I drill the hole and put the beak on. Mm -hmm.